Imagine there is a huge crevice right under your house. What would you do? Probably pick up your belongings and evacuate the structure. This is what happened to one Kenyan back in 2018. A massive crevice formed almost overnight under his home. The man escaped to safety, but the event revealed a deeper issue, much deeper than most people thought. The crevice appeared after a month of heavy rainfall. This part of the country, west of the Kenyan capital of Nairobi, sits in a seismically active region. The massive hole in the ground was covered with ash from a nearby dormant volcano. The crevice in the ground ran for miles, and it was 65 feet wide in some places. It was as deep as the Hollywood sign is tall. The gaping hole damaged a vital local road. People soon dubbed it the Grand Canyon. But this is no laughing matter. The same thing happened in 2023. Kenya's highway authority had to close the busy road for repairs once again. Preliminary reports showed that heavy rains were the likeliest cause. The rupture itself is part of the Great Rift Valley. It extends from Jordan in the north to Mozambique in eastern Africa. Its total length is nearly one and a half times the distance from New York to Los Angeles. Rift valleys are located all over the planet. They're lowland places where tectonic plates move apart or rift. These are huge slabs of rock in Earth's outermost layer. They rest on molten rock underneath, which makes them unstable. Tectonic plates are constantly on the move. They can bump into each other or one plate can go under another. This can occur both on land and at the bottom of the ocean. Continental rifts are less frequent than the ones we find underwater. The East African Rift is one of four major ones. The nearby Arabian Plate has been on the move for the last 30 million years. When it separated from the African mainland, it created the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. When you look at the physical map of Africa, it looks like one contiguous landmass. But when you dig deeper, quite literally, you realize it rests on two tectonic plates. The Nubian one carries most of the continent. The smaller Somali plate holds the Horn of Africa. The crevice in Kenya appeared in the rift valley between these two plates. That's because they're moving away from each other. The rift is growing larger, which means that one day the African continent will split into two. The rifting process is a slow one. The present rate is just a quarter of an inch every year. Scientists estimate that the split will occur in 5 to 10 million years. Some experts place this event 50 million years into the future. The end result will be two African subcontinents. They will be separated by a body of water that will become our planet's sixth ocean. This also means that five now landlocked countries will get access to the sea. When they get a coastline, the countries could build harbors to trade with the rest of the world. Three other countries, including Kenya, would find themselves on two continents. The future split of Africa into two parts might sound dramatic at first, but it wouldn't be unnatural. This is the first time, after hundreds of millions of years, that the shape of Earth would change so much. The last time this happened was during the Jurassic period, if you're now thinking of Steven Spielberg's 1993 blockbuster movie, you're right! The world of dinosaurs had a different shape than the one we're familiar with today. There was a supercontinent called Gondwana. It included today's South America, Antarctica, India, Africa, Arabia, Madagascar, and Australia. Then, around 180 million years ago, things started to change. Earth was starting to take its familiar shape. The Indian subcontinent collided with the Asian mainland. The event gave rise to the Himalayan mountain range. These are the highest mountains in the world, with 30 peaks over 24,000 feet in altitude. This process is far from over. The Himalayas are still growing in height. On the other side of Gondwana, Africa and South America first separated together. But they weren't meant to last long. 40 million years later, South America started drifting away from Africa. This created the South Atlantic Ocean. 
The evidence of this ancient continental drift is obvious to this day. If you look at the map of South America, you'll notice a bulge in its eastern part. That's the modern country of Brazil. On the other side of the Atlantic, Africa has a huge inland curve on its western side. The two act as pieces of a giant jigsaw puzzle. They roughly fit into one another. European scientists noticed this as early as the 17th century. Further research confirmed the theory that South America and Africa once belonged to the same landmass. This is only one part of the story. At the beginning of the 20th century, a German scientist came up with the theory of continental drift. He believed that all of Earth's continents were once part of a supercontinent called Pangaea. The name comes from Greek, and it means all of the Earth. Makes sense, doesn't it? It was surrounded by the oceanic ancestor of the Pacific Ocean. Some 200 million years ago, this gigantic landmass was home to many animal and plant species. Thanks to them, scientists could piece together what our planet used to look like. For example, Mesosaurus was a giant freshwater reptile that existed during the Cretaceous period. Paleontologists found its fossils in only two places, Africa and South America. The animal lived in fresh water, so there was no way it could have swam in the Atlantic Ocean. This pointed to the fact that it lived in a single habitat, rich in rivers and lakes. This would have been possible in only one scenario. The two continents that are now miles apart were once a single piece of land. Pangaea wasn't the only supercontinent in Earth's history. Continents came together and drifted apart several times throughout our planet's past. Researchers know of at least three times this happened. Panodia formed 600 million years ago. Rodinia was an even older supercontinent. It existed a billion years ago. The driving force behind all these changes was tectonic activity. Plates deep beneath our feet have the ability to create new land and oceans. This is what's happening in East Africa right now. This activity is most evident at the bottom of the sea. Molten rock rises from deep within the earth to create new seafloor. The process is called seafloor spreading. It happens along underwater mountains called ridges. One example is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. I think you can fairly accurately guess its location. Over time, the seafloor grows wider here. This has an effect on the continents on both sides of the ridge. Seafloor spreading causes continents to move away from each other. Right now, North America is moving away from Europe at a rate of one inch per year. This doesn't seem like much, but give it 50 million years and the Americas are gonna bump into the western part of Asia. The two landmasses will form a new supercontinent. Geologists from Yale University have a name for this land, Amasia. Talk about rushing before the ore. They ran a series of computer simulations to see what Earth would look like millions of years from now. The new continent is likely going to form somewhere around the North Pole. But don't go shopping for winter clothes just yet. The time frame for this event might extend to 200 million years into the future.